Hey, Scott. Hey, how you doing, Scott? Oh, you're muted. I am muted. Now yeah. I'm not. Now we hear you. How are you? Yeah. How are you? Doing good, man. Just chugging along. Lots going on. Yeah, you had a busy launch, it sounds like. Oh, dude. <laughs> if you only knew. Yeah. This cool, calm, and collected surface is a war field. Oh, man. Well, it seems like a positive <laughs> war field, that's for sure. Oh, it's been, it's been wow. wild. Here's, 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 here's my all, life. Carrie's oh, all publishing our books, and we're good friends with Kelly Clements. So I think we have a couple of connection points. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Both of those people are some of my favorite people in the world. He did, Carrie did an amazing job with our book. He like crushed it. And we hit like Wall Street Journal bestseller and it's starting to go. Like we're literally up like buying another 10,000 books right now just to get them out to a bunch of people that want to do bulks. And it's been super wow. fun, man. Super fun. That's Love awesome. That. Congrats. Yeah. Here's the last two months of my life. You ready? Our fourth baby was born. Oh. Okay. Like a month and a half ago. Congrats. Oh, it's he, Lincoln. He's the cutest kid. Oh. Uh, so we have six, four, two and nothing. And then a month ago, we launched Smart Money Parenting, our show, our podcast show. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, it hit like number two worldwide for families. And it's like ripping. Then we launched the book like two weeks ago or three weeks ago. And then now, like as of Friday, like gravy stacks going out to the world. So this has been like the craziest wow. launch season of my entire life. Like this is nuts. Awesome. That's really exciting. There's huge shifts yeah, happening for you. Huge, huge That's shift. Really incredible. But I love it. I mean, I was, I think I was born for this. Oh, and that sounds awesome. like it. Yeah. Cool. And it's so neat. Like, do you feel like they're all so closely aligned that it like they couldn't have all been done at any other time except for all at the same time. Yeah, that's just how God works, I guess. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. But yeah, I mean, they all they all do work together, right? Like our whole goal is 50 million financially competent kids ready to succeed in the world. And so it takes an army, right? And so with the show, we have a ton of partners. With the book, we have like all these igniters, like Carrie sets up hundreds mm -hmm. of them and then with the app we have like thousands of affiliate partners ready to become our like financial ambassadors to the world and so it's an army it really is like i just got off the phone a minute ago with verini she runs jumpstart coalition which is like all of the national financial standards groups in the whole country and mm -hmm. they found us from a bunch of people and they're like help like let's, let's go so we're like all right we'll help let's do this so uh -huh. So oh, exciting. So you're starting with children and I, I, no doubt it's influencing, you know, their parents and then just this broader scope. And so, yeah. you know, it sounds as though you're going to reach way more than just the children that you're wanting to impact. Oh yeah. The, the Trojan horse here is we built the world's first bank. That's a game and parents are now playing these games with their kids. But tell us more about that. I'd love to hear. Are we, that. are we, are we live? Are we going? Yeah, I started, I knew this we would fast because we have so many connections. So I just recorded it from the beginning. Oh, we so we'll plan it though. I was like, hey, this is a really good conversation. She, she never knows. Yeah. You never know what's going on. We usually let you know. You can look pretty. You're good. <laughs> I'm fine going. But we, the other thing too, is um, what we're doing for our partners is, you know, we'd love to have you guys be uh, an affiliate, an ambassador, a financial literacy ambassador. So we, we can get you guys a link to share with your audience as well. Awesome. So, and it's basic, it's very simple. It's like gravystack.com slash whatever you want, 18, whatever, I don't care. Just tell us what, and we can say it on the show for people and put it in notes. And then we'll give you all the links to get people in. And it's like a, it's a paid partnership and army of people. So we yeah. got to figure out what that is. Do you want it to be like one eight slash one eight or what do you guys want to do? We just do 18 summers. Yeah, that's easy to remember. Yeah. Okay, so we'll make sure to say that on the recording just to... Sure. Okay, cool. We'll get that link to you guys before it goes live. Awesome. And by the way, I'm Jamie, and this is Jim, since yeah. we've not officially met. So let's start there. I apologize. Well, if, I, if, if you're anything like Kelly or Carrie, I, I feel like we're fast friends, though. That's awesome. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Kelly came to one of our retreats. One of our family retreats. Yeah, with her son. A long time ago, maybe. And I, I got to hear about these family board meetings. This sounds incredible. I heard about that. I was like, oh my gosh, this is like 
how we live, like yeah. get the family involved, have the money conversations, like bring them up in the way they need to go. Like so many families just miss that. They outsource the parenting to everybody else and yeah. they miss that critical piece. Yeah. So, and I can go into like all the stats too of what we're seeing and why that's so critical, but I would uh, love it. Yeah, where, where, where do you guys, where do you guys live by the way? We're in Costa Rica right now. We're part-time here and then um, North Florida part-time. Awesome. Okay. How about I'm in Phoenix. Oh, okay. Nice. Cool. But I'd love to get to, I'd love to get to Costa Rica. We're trying to plan a Puerto Rico trip, but. Oh, fun. Costa Rica would be amazing. Nice yeah, spot. it is. It's, we love it here. It's a nice, we have five children, uh, 19, 17, eight, six, and one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you guys have the full spectrum. So it's That's crazy here too. Boards. Yeah, it's crazy here too, but it's, it's such a great um, family space here in Costa Rica, you know. It's oh like, yeah wild wild child friendly yeah a lot yeah. of entrepreneurial families here too in this little town that we're in so it's nice mm -hmm. what what town is it called nosara yeah awesome yeah. Yeah. i think i've been through there once or twice in my yeah. early travel days but yeah that's a beautiful cool. spot. there's a couple of puerto rico spots as well that are like great families great oh, communities yeah. um we, tons of entrepreneurs house, we had a house for about 12 years in aguadilla okay and, in Puerto Rico. Where yeah. are you guys? Uh, well, where we have a house here in Phoenix. I'm from Seattle originally, north of Seattle. In Puerto Rico, where will you head? Um, what's the main city like 20 minutes in from the Juan? airport? Yes. Yeah, San that's fun. It's historic. But there, but it's not San Juan. It's like there's this like huge group of young entrepreneurial families just like north of there. It's like a little that, community. Um, what's what's the name? Of, that's where the Abernathy's lived, I think. Oh yes, it's like it's very fancy. Like the Goves are there, the Sumters are there, like those all those. <laughs> yeah, people. I forget the name, but yes, I can't there. The Abernathy. I don't know if you know Justin Abernathy and Jason Abernathy. They live there. Okay, <laughs> I've heard of them. I I don't know them personally, but Dorado or El Dorado. 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 That's, that's it. That's it. It was a horse. I'm like, there's some sort of horse kind of. Yes, Dorado, Dorado. Yes. We were supposed to go there a few months back, but then it got canceled. So we're trying to, obviously then we had a baby. So congrats. Oh, that's so exciting. Yeah. All right. Well, so let's, let's do this. We have plenty to talk about. Let's get this going. Yes. So we have our notes here. So we're not. So we're super interested. This is the way in which we teach our children as well. And we have a whole curriculum and, and one of our, we have three main pillars. One of them being financial literacy. So that is absolutely something that's not taught in school. And what a gift that you're bringing to the world and, and to our world, because we're super excited to hear more about how you're bringing focus and attention to this important part. Absolutely. Let's, this is, this is my life. So let's do it. Let's how do, do you want to, where do you want to hit, hit off first? Let's go. We'll, we'll, we'll do your intro separately, you know, all the, all the whole yeah. bio. So um, what are, what would you say, you know, I know you've got um value creation kid yeah where, where did value creation kid start i know you said you now have four of your own now yeah. this started when you started parenting yourself or did you did you see Rosalind i was before? i was raised as a value creation kid so uh -huh. a lot of this is the principles behind our new gravy stack banking app that plays like a game for families right so all of the, the lessons in the book go right into our new app for kids to learn financial competency. Um, but I was raised this way. So, you know, I come from like four generations of like mega entrepreneurs that never passed on a penny, surprisingly. Wow. They wanted to teach us to fish. And so like, you know, I come from my dad and my grandpa built like one of the largest banking systems in America called Interwest. It exited to Wells Fargo for billions. They put the whole thing into ministry stuff and like charity for helping kids and families all over the world. And I couldn't be more thankful because they taught me to create value in the world from a very early age. And that was the goal is like, the point of the book is it's value creation kid, the healthy struggles your children need to succeed. Love it. And what, we, what we basically say in here is like, we give them this method of, helping kids have a lens to look at the world, to create value around them at all times, whether it's material value, emotional value, or spiritual value. 
Those are three different types of value that we talk about. So those are really good. So I want to make sure everyone hears those. Yeah. So value is created um, in three ways. Material value is the first one, what you create and produce in the world. A lot of times people think of value creation as like driving value. I think that's how the economy works is you add value for other people, solve problems, find wants or needs and fix them for other people. It's the fastest way to promotion. It's what all entrepreneurs do every day. Um, but when a kid starts to learn, you don't have to be an entrepreneur to create value. What you do need is the entrepreneurial thinking, right? Seeing problems around you and ways to help the people and the community around you, solving, solving issues, right? I love this idea of kids starting their first little business at home, run, a run of products, flipping things at uh, garage sales, doing things in the community or at home to create value, doing gigs, we call it. So that's, that's material value to, to create. Uh, emotional value is how you think and feel and make others think and feel. So emotional value is created by the way that you uh, encourage other people, the way that you lift them up, the way that you help them, the way that you check in with them. You know, when a kid gets this idea of creating emotional value, um, it creates an energy in the home where people are considerate of one another. They're helping each other. They're caring for one another. They're checking in, they're being kind and empathetic and, you know, all the things that are required for uh, emotional health. So emotional energy uh, value is a huge one. And then spiritual value is um, we define spiritual value as connecting people to something bigger. So, you know, for me, it's pretty simple. I love Jesus. It's, it's that easy, like I lift other people up, let them know their love, that they're valuable, that God has a purpose for their life. But there's a lot of examples of spiritual value. My favorite one is in the 60s, we're going to put a man on the moon and bring him back safely by the end of the decade. Think about how that brought our country together. It brought everybody together to like work on this common goal. And so spiritual value is something that gets created when other people can connect to something bigger than themselves, to a greater mission or a purpose. Great businesses do this, organizations do this, schools can do this, teams can do this, families can do this. This is what we want as our family culture. Here's what it means to have our last name, right? I believe that that creates immense spiritual value as well. Yeah, and it's not talked about. about. It's like a hot button, right? Like people are like, ah, spiritual stuff. Well, it's the it's the questions we all ask when our heads hit the pillows every day. We might as well talk to kids about how to create it. So yeah, it's kind of like human spirit. You're lifting the humans. You're just raising. I, that's I me. Mean, I love it. I love it helps it. kids get out of um, their their own way. Really, that's a, a, a really important thing because I think you know separation and isolation is one of the worst things that can happen to a young kid or a teenager. They get siloed, they get um, closed off, they can, and that's where a lot of hurt comes. That's where a lot of mental health issues come. And so, you know, if we can help kids learn to create value in all these different ways, it's literally like the antidote to entitlement. It's the antidote to um, self-doubt. It's the antidote for like victimhood and laziness and like the taker syndrome. And so it's just about how to create value in the world. And so what we have is this like value creation cycle. So you start with like healthy struggle. And when I say healthy struggle, we have like 90 of them in the book that aren't taught in schools, but they're critical for real, the real world. Um, and it's not like tough love, by the way. It's not like you're not, you don't pass on trauma to your kids. Like, are you kidding me? Like you don't abuse and neglect them. What we're talking about is healthy struggles. Any athlete gets this. Anyone like working hard in school, anyone building uh, a job or a business or you're, you're going through healthy struggles to learn communication skills and relationship skills and work skills, practical skills, you know, college prep skills, to, you know, those types of things. But when you start going through those healthy struggles, it builds capability in kids, resiliency in kids, practical skills in kids that then builds confidence in that kid that then immediately starts creating value for them and everybody around them. And then you just go right back into it. Healthy struggle capability, confidence, create value. It's like this upward cycle for a kid that really gets them ahead. I mean, it's like the superpower that people need. And a lot of times kids want to avoid the struggle, right? And parents fall into this trap all the time. Oh, for Just, sure. You know, I want to protect 
on the market. Too insulated. Yeah. Insulation is no. a good thing. And That's Scott, how do, you, how do you take the healthy struggle and transfer it, like you're saying, without being a helicopter parent, tiger parent, whatever, lawnmower, all these names they have, without being in a way in which facilitates that capability? Because there's got to be something more that you're like teaching and guiding and instilling that's bringing them from struggle into growth. Yes. So um, capability and confidence and value creation are a, a byproduct of the healthy struggle. And so what parents need to have is an environment where those healthy struggles are accepted or just part of our culture. It's, it's our, it's, it's our family. And so in the book, we go through our kind of four steps of the method. So it's like value creation. We teach all the pieces of what that means, how to do it. The next part is the job in the home. Everyone has roles in the home and a job in the home. And then we go straight into like financial competency, all the pieces of financial competency, save, spend, share, earn, invest, protect yourself safely online, borrow, create value, skills, traits. And then the last one is those healthy struggles. So it's, we're walking through family, like with families, like here's how you can create a culture in your home. The most practical um, example of this would be the home economy. We created in Gravy Stack, which just a quick explanation, Gravy Stack launches like literally right now, like in two days. So it's the world's first banking and investing app for kids and teens that plays like a game. So it's super fun. There's a hundred financial games inside of the bank account where kids are literally learning how to save and spend and share and invest and earn money at home in the community and protect themselves safely online. Um, they're making real investments. It's real money. It's, it's incredibly practical for parents. It's like a roadmap. Okay. It's, it's what I was explaining a minute ago about building the culture and the environment at home. And it's just, it's a roadmap that makes it so easy for families to just get in and start going through the cycle, okay? Um, but the home economy for us, um, we call it the three E's. If you wanna help your kids become financially capable, do the three E's. Set expectations in the home, have them start covering expenses, that's the second E. And then the third E is extra pay ways that they can earn money around the house to cover those expenses and start to build this cycle, okay? Um, we're not really allowance people. I don't know if this is gonna be a bomb dropped for, no. for you well, listeners. That was, that was another thing us. I wanted to talk to you about when not you say covering expenses. A lot of people in our community. I, We've guided them. a lot of people through this discussion. So I'd love to hear more of your perspective. Well, you guys know I'm preaching to the choir here, but allowance has three major issues. And most parents press the easy button. They're like, all right, I'll pay you your age every week. You're eight years old, you get eight bucks a week. Like that's what a lot of parents just do to press the easy button. Well, if you're giving kids money for free, that's uh, socialism. And it, they don't, well, they will never spend your money like they will spend their own money. They sure. won't save your money. They won't invest your money. They have to earn that money to actually become financially competent with it. And so a lot of parents are like, well, I, just, I want to give them some money so they can learn some basic principles. Well, they've got to earn it to treat it like their own. That's what ownership and personal responsibility mean. Okay. That's the first problem. But then you got parents like, well, I make them do chores and then I pay them allowance. Well, okay. But half those chores, they should be doing for free. Half of those chores, they should not get paid for. That's their rent. That's like the part of being our family member. That's your job in the house, right? And then the other half, it's like, you're just paying a $1 amount for a bunch of different things that have different amounts of value created, right? Like if I'm going to clean the whole garage and sweep the whole garage and pump up all the tires, that's different than like maybe a bathroom. You know, there's, you got to teach individual value created so that they can connect it. They have to connect that like different things are worth different amounts of money. And then the third problem with allowance is the parents that go, well, I don't pay any allowance. I'm the, I, my kids are the good kids that just do all their chores like they're told. And that's cool, except your kids aren't learning anything about financial responsibility, right? They're, they're not learning anything about finances, making or managing money at all. They're going to get out in the real world. And then the bank of mom and dad is going to roll on until they're 30 and you're spending everything. You're paying for everything for them right now. So 
what we created was this home economy system, right? Which with the three E's. So it's the expectations, which is here are the things that you're doing as part of our family and you're not getting paid for them. You're going to make your bed, clean your room, get dressed, brush your teeth, do your best in school, probably take out the trash and do the dishes. Like we're not paying for that. That's part of your role in our home, the expectation. Then this is where a lot of parents go, don't do this. The expenses. We've identified 12 major categories of expenses that kids should start taking over for themselves at ages like six to eight. So like the toys and the trinkets and the souvenirs and the in-app purchases and the technology and the extra sports equipment, like we'll pay the Nikes, but if you want Air Jordans, you're coming up with the extra $80, buddy, you know, um, social outings with friends and social trips, birthday presents for your friends. This one's a, my favorite actually, because how many times did you guys buy that present? Your kid doesn't even know what it is. You wrap the present, you got the card, they sign it and they go throw it on the table. That kid's not learning generosity or sharing. They make the 20 bucks. They, they, you, you can buy it for them, but they have, they make the money to do it. They help bring it to the person and wrap it and sign it. They bring it to the kid. They're going to run into that birthday party here. Open this right now. I made the, I got this for you. I, I made this. You got it. I want to see your face when you open it, do it right now. Right. Think about the difference. That kid learns generosity for life. Like what it means to give. Yep. So those are the expenses. And now mom and dads are freed up on hundreds of dollars a month. At least some families are like a thousand dollars a month that they are covering for their kids and not even realizing it. But that extra money you just saved by passing off expenses, you give them extra pay. So we have 55 home gigs inside of gravy stack. That's just this automatic system. Every week, the kids have all these things they can do for $2, $5, $3, $10. These are things like the garage or washing windows, you know, cleaning a bathroom, organizing a closet, making a meal, whatever it would be. You stuff in the yard. There's a ton of them. And it's way more than normal chores because parents end up doing all the other stuff themselves where your kids can actually be an asset in your home, not a liability. Your kids can be an incredibly beneficial part of helping the home run smoothly. So the three E's is like the environment to create for a home economy that gets kids to create value and go through that cycle. Does that make sense? That's like one example. I love it. Yeah. Great ones. Especially I, I haven't, we always say that which we obtain too easily, we never really appreciate. So mm -hmm. we, we have that with our kids, but not down to the job assignments. That's for sure. We have stuff where, hey, it's included. It's your part of the team. There isn't, why would there be paid for that? You know, this is your, that's right. your part. And when someone falls short, yeah, and when somebody falls short, I'm quick to say, "Hey, uh, you helping helps me do the things that we all need." Like I, I, I can't do this I'm, by myself. And so, if you need my help, when you're, you know, it's really the older children. Sometimes, you know, they'll they're so busy they'll forget something, and and I have to call it tight and say, "Hey, I know you like to be able to come in and have a long conversation at eleven o'clock at night when I'm trying to go to bed." If you want my full attention, I can't also be doing dishes and floors when they're supposed to be your task. Like we, we have to right. balance. And, and two, when they were younger, it was really hard because all of like all of their friends got an allowance. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, never, and we they were like, we just... and none of their friends had to do what our children did. And yeah. so, you know, we, they'd be out in the yard. They One of them even wrote like a comedy skit on grandma's coming. We got to mulch the yard and organize the uh, garage and, you know, all this stuff. And so that's just our life. Like you are expected to be a part of the team. And, you know, the thing is too, is that I'm certain much like your family with our family organized and running in that way, we also got to do a lot of cool things that other families don't get to do. You know, we get to right. serve countries. We get to live part-time in other places. We get to foster animals that uh, if other, if they weren't contributing to the help and care of these pets, then heck no, we could never do this kind of fun stuff. And so I think it just teaches them a greater picture of cooperation. And honestly, like you said, like I use the term pulling their head out of their ass. I think yours was a little nicer, but it teaches them this care and compassion for something other than themselves. Yeah. How did you make that line, Scott, between what was included and what's not. It's just almost like special Great. projects and routine. It sounds like, or is it, it's a little- That's more. it. It's, it's special projects and routine. Like 
Love that. Here's your job. Your job in our family is, is, are these things. These are the expectations we set. This is what it means to be a Donald, to have our last name. We work together on these things. But there are a ton of other things around the house that kids need to, like, it's a, such a great way for kids to learn basic value creation, basic skill sets. You know, when something new comes that needs to be built, don't just do it, pass it off to your kids, like get them involved as many times as possible to be able to get these reps in to build value. And what we love about this system is parents are saying, Hey, we're about 30 days into this system and you can use gravy gravy stack. The app is basically the automated version, right? You get a weekly printout for the fridge. It all, it renews daily, weekly, monthly one-offs. It's all a system. It's really easy. You set it and you forget it. And now the kids are off and running, but you, you don't need that. You could do it on a whiteboard. You could write it down. Like there's ways to practically do it, but now kids are not asking for money from mom and dad anymore. So 30 days in, they, they, the bank of mom and dad is closed basically for free money. So you, how many times your teenagers are like, I need 20 bucks for this. I need 50 bucks for this. We're going on this thing. Now they know how to create it and build that system to prepare. And what we're starting to see now with our beta families is now kids, once they get the home economy, they start doing community gigs way faster. Mm. So now they're doing things in the neighborhood. They're understanding the principles of value creation. So now they're going to the neighbors. They're doing stuff for relatives. They're launching a product. They're doing dog walking. They're, do they're doing a lot of other things to make extra money outside the home to cover the things that now are part of the environment that they have to pay for. And then extras that they want, the wants and the needs like together. And so what we're seeing is like they get this mindset and now they're running with it. And it doesn't, you know, only 5% of kids are really built in with this. How do I make money, dad? How do I make money, mom? Like the entrepreneurial gene, right? That we call it. That's only 5% of kids. The other 95% of kids, it's not wired. And so those kids, like I said earlier, need to be learning the entrepreneurial mindset. They don't have to become entrepreneurs, but once they understand like how the real world works, because that's what you're doing, right? You're bringing real world environments into the home so that when they hit the real world, they're ready, right? That's the real goal is make them ready for the real world. Give them the software to be ready for outside the nest, right? Because these other, the other families that are doing allowance and a bunch of other stuff and paying for everything for their kids, those are the kids that jump into the real world and are blindsided. They've never done a budget. They've, they're going to credit card debt. They fall into a bunch of cataclysmic problems that now we've seen with all the stats you know, 76% of 25-year-olds fail a basic financial literacy test. Wow. wow. That's, That's difficult. Yeah. And for Jen, people up to, uh, to your method, you know, because we, we, I guess, backwards fell in very similar to, to your process and what you're saying. And, you know, having a 19 and 17-year-old, both of them graduated high school early so that they could start service-based businesses and they're both doing well. And so right. I think it's exactly what you're saying. They took the process and what was started in the home and said, well, then how could I do this bigger than my parents? And how can I bring this into the world and get, you know, the exchange of the dollar for that by providing a service? And I but, think, but they also did it, they did it without bitterness. And I'd, I'd love to remind yes. you on that, Scott, you're, I mean, it sounds like your family had a pretty large venture. And I mean, just from conversations we've had, some kids, and I think their parents don't have courage, and I hate to say this, but they don't have courage to, to take this away and say, look, I want you to stand on your own two feet and be strong, and it's going to take this, and it sounds like that's what your family before you did. Yeah. Well, you didn't obviously develop bitterness, and I, I, I would bet the ranch your children aren't going to, but how do other parents, because this is a big one, I mean, Yes. We'll I'll talk about it, but the 800 pound gorilla in the room is, oh, I don't want my kids to hate me. Oh, they're going to be bigger. And we, we were kind of like, we mess up a lot of things, but this one thing we said, we don't care. This is, <laughs> this is making them stronger and it's starting to really take seed. Yeah. How have you gone from that generation to yourself to this, where you're passing it on? Like, how do you show that courage that your family did to, to not? Yeah, you know, that, that is, that is a core question that we get all the time is how do I set this up? What do I do? What if this happens with my kids? A lot of times parents fall into this trap of buying their kids love. So they'll use money to bribe, to coerce, to buy the love, to pay for all the things. And they, they actually do it out of a 
a, a good spirit, they go, I just want my kids to have all the things I never had. You know, I want to buy the things for my kids I never had growing up. I, I, I don't want them to go through the struggles that I had growing up. I want to make sure that they have like the most fun, the most security, the most bubble, really. And, and that actually is, at the end of the day, a huge disservice to your kids because it's like, how did you get to be who you are? You went through all this. Um, and what we don't want to do is pass off trauma and neglect and, you know, all these bad things. You don't want to pass on generational trauma. But when you set up this system, it removes that bribery and coercion. It removes that the mom and, you know, especially with co-parenting, this happens a lot. Kids will go to one parent. They want to give them the most fun weekend possible. They're buying everything. They're doing all this crazy stuff. Then they go to the other parent. They want to one-up them. And so it becomes this bribery battle. This and battle. then, yeah. And then in the home, you know, kids just end up demanding and then withholding and having these issues. Like if you're giving them once, they're going to ask for it again. And they just keep going. They keep going. It never ends. And then the bank of mom and dad rolls on forever. So what we're trying to get people to is like, if you can create this system, you actually are giving independence and responsibility and trust to your kids. And you're removing that obstacle so that you can now have a real deep, growing, thriving relationship with your kids. A kid I, I, that I would even take that one further, Scott. I think that you're preventing a back road to addiction. And I know that sounds really deep, but we've worked with thousands of families. And the path to addiction, unfortunately, is not Sometimes it's been greater on a more wealth and financially secure family that did exactly what you're talking about. And frankly, that happened on some people very close to me. And it really scared me. I didn't come from money, but I saw others that did. And I believe what you just described, it's not only giving the responsibility, you know, the, 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 uh, just the ability to stand on your own two feet, but you are veering them, I believe, away from addiction. I don't know. Absolutely. If you really you're teaching them responsibility. Because a, a kid that's been entitled and spoiled their whole life, when they get off and they have a ton of time and freedom and a bunch of money, that's the kid that falls into a bunch of traps, right? Yeah. You said it earlier. I, I think you nailed it. It's like, the, I actually believe this is why generational wealth doesn't transfer well. Um, the, the biggest issue with generational transfer, what's the stats? Like 90% of generational wealth is pissed away in two generations. And people are like, oh, hi. I did everything. I worked my whole life to give my kids and grandkids this. Well, it's the education and communication that doesn't get passed on. Um, and so the kids aren't actually building value throughout their life. They're not taking that responsibility. They're not gaining the skills to be responsible when they get it. And so then those kids that didn't earn it, don't have the tools, get a bunch of money or assets or in the will or whatever it would be. And they end up either feeling guilty or shameful or unqualified to have it. And so they either like throw it away, they are useless with it, they <laughs> invest it in dumb things, or they just bl plunder it, you know, whatever. They just get, it's bad. And so the only way I've seen successful transfer, in our family, we didn't even do that. It was like transfer the knowledge, not the money. Um, and the best way I've seen is like really good education, helping your kids bring them into all of the money conversations with your family. Here's what mom and dad are thinking about investing in. Here's what mom and dad are giving to for these like charities. Here's what, here's what we're thinking about doing. You know, here's the trip we're going to go on and the budget and the planning, right? We have a game. We have all these games inside a gravy stack. They're canceling subscriptions for the parents. They're like getting grocery coupons for mom and dad. They're planning the next family trip on a budget. They're getting like three flights, three hotel. Like they're getting the best deal. And then a bunch of fun mini games to compete with their friends. Like it's really fun. It's a whole world of characters inside of Gravy Stack. And so when you do that, like what it does is it gives you so many reps of conversations to have with your kids about like the really practical skills so that when they leave the nest, they're like ready. They, they get it. They understand it. You're doing real investing, by the way, and real charity donating and like you're going through quizzes and games to learn what you care about and like your sweet spot and your money motto like relationship to money and wants versus needs games, monthly budgeting games, online, you know, security games, how to protect yourself safely. Like the list just goes on. We've been building this thing for years and it's, uh, it's about to hit the world. So I think it's the, the conversations with your kids that matter the most practical real life conversations. How many times have you guys been like, 
Well, not you guys, because you're really good at this. Most parents are like, how was school today? <laughs> it's like, good. Okay, moving on. It's like, <laughs> you know, what, we, what we're actually doing in Gravy Stack is we're like, we're giving parents conversation starters for dinner based on gameplay and based on like age. So it's like, why don't you ask the kids like how they created value for someone else today? Like what, like we're talking about this investment thing right now. Let's talk about investing at dinner. What'd you learn in this game? Like what, what stuck out to you? Let's talk about risk versus reward. Like we're teeing up the parents to have these conversations because the more you can communicate and educate and bring the, the kids up with you in it, the better off they're going to be. Yeah, for sure. hundred percent. It's, it's an unfair advantage almost. And it is something that I believe what you're talking about should be, we've talked about yeah, this, this, should be, this should be core curriculum, but it's not core. even in so what we did starting in high school was our voice attended we have a weekly meeting with our accountant and cfo so she touches everything financial in our business and all of our businesses and the boys sit in and for a period of time their friends they had some of their friends when they were still being like in school and not yet working they would come and sit in on these meetings because there's so many terms flying and things that you don't know and high risk and wow so you guys you do play really hard but but gosh, you must, you work really hard too, because you have to make these big decisions. And I think that, you know, that the concept of money is just so big and abstract to children, unless you bring them in on it. And so is how hard we work, I think too, because sometimes when you're, yes. because I imagine for you, Scott, that your platform and what you've worked on, as we talked earlier, is so integrated. Like every part of what you do is who you are and what you do, right? With your family, with your wife, with your children, with your friends. And so sometimes it may, it looks so easy from the outside being an entrepreneur, which we all know that it's not. Yeah. But it's nice when you- I'm an overnight, I'm a 20 year overnight success. Is that <laughs> <what you're doing? laughs> exactly. And so it's just nice when they're part of that conversation to know that like, this doesn't come easy. Yeah. It comes with diligence and it comes with consistent deposits as you're teaching. I wanted to ask how old you said, you know, about six to eight is when you can begin these conversations. Is that the same to begin gravy stack? Yeah. So uh, kids can start gravy stack at age six. It's eight right now. It'll move to six in a few weeks, uh, up to 18 years old. But we now have college kids playing it because they didn't learn it. And yeah. we also have parents, you know, the majority of our parents have asked, can I just make my banking gravy stack? because it's so practical. Like you're seeing the digital flow of money in here, of real money into your save, spend and share accounts based on the pre-set percentages. Like you're watching it all flow. We threw out checking accounts because no kids are going to write checks ever again. We, we don't do monthly statements. We show the flow of money based on your revenue pipes. And these bubbles come in and they pop and turn into coins. So kids can actually connect physical dollars to digital. And wow. so- and then they have an investing account inside of it where their save jar is split and they're learning stocks, they're learning ETFs, they're learning long-term delayed gratification and compounding interest. So it's all in here for them starting at ages six to eight. But the money conversations, like my four-year-old is doing our home economy, right? Oh, he, was, he did six gigs on Saturday because he's prepping for a, his, he wants the laser tag game. But he also knows that like 20% is going into his save jar and 10% is going into share. So he knows only 70% of it's actually going to that. And this practical, simple things. And it's over and above his expectations. And it's over his expenses. He's starting to cover. We gave him like the toys and trinkets is the first expense he's starting to prepare for, right? So these conversations, kids are way smarter than you think they are. And they're going to learn everything you don't want them to learn years ahead of when you think they will. And so our model has always been treat your kids two years older than they already are. And so they can cook when they're five, you know, oh, yeah. you can talk about your, your family's finances when they're 10. Like you, I, I want kids, my kids driving stuff when they're 13, you know, I want them doing little motorcycle things or like jet skis or like, you know, ATVs, like get them in the motion of life ahead of time so that when they are the age, everybody else is doing stuff, they're way ahead. So that's, you know, the thinking is, we thought it would be eight to 10 years old. And then all of a sudden my six-year-old's playing all the games and loving it. I'm like, okay, let's move it back. Cause these kids are smarter than we think. And they're really tech savvy. And by the way, the app is not, um, we're in the good tech category as my friend BJ Fogg explains. He's the head of behavior Institute at Stanford. We're not in, the, we don't do like dopamine hits, 
It's not a social media app. It's time cut off mini games playing about financial literacy and competency. And then you're going into the real world and doing real life challenges, oh, interviewing yeah. the banker, doing the family, you know, budget challenge where you got to make dinner under 10 bucks for the family. And, you know, you get grits and you earn awards by hitting goals, but they have to give you a four out of five star rating for it to count, you know, like all these fun challenges that are so simple and practical that people didn't even think of that we've brought in this team to say, hey, it's one thing to learn stuff. It's another thing to really make it operational in the world. So everything we do is super, super simple and practical with families and kids. So, yeah, I think have the conversations as soon as they can talk. If they can they can wipe themselves, then they can talk about the home economy. That was our joke. Okay. Someone to write a book on how to get your kids to wipe themselves. <laughs> yeah, when you write that book, let me know. I know, whole nother business. Well, but I, but I, what I like they to- They can balance the checkbook before they can wipe their butt. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's the, uh, it's also what you're doing is you're harnessing experiential education, which we're always about for our retreats and everything we do, yes. you know, a lecture, or, hey, here's a list of definitions on financial literacy. Memorize them. And then, I mean, that's not yep. going to get you. You're putting nope. them in the practical affairs of life using yep. financial literacy. And now you, they see it as a game. That's when you get real results. That's when you instill the value. That's when you know how to actually apply, which is just heads above what some college kids are getting now. Oh yeah. Um, kids, so... I didn't really tell you about my background, but I, I started the largest. Yeah, what's your, like, we never asked your background. Thirty-eight. Yeah, yeah. Well, just real quick, because this is really important. I started Apex um, Leadership Co., which used to be called Apex Fun Run. It's the largest school fundraising franchise in America. So we have 6 million families we've served, teaching leadership and character and fitness, doing huge fun runs and raising money. We've raised like a, a half a billion dollars for schools. The biggest hole that we saw in the public system was financial education, financial mm -hmm. competency. It's yep. just missed. Teachers don't know this stuff. How are we expecting them to teach the kids when they don't know it themselves? And then banks don't care about kids because they don't have money for deposits and parents have no roadmap. Like, so we have this huge old hole here that I saw over the last 12 years in that company. Um, kids learn in two ways, having fun and real life experience. That's how you get long-term deep memory. Yeah. You think homework does that? No, like repetition can help, but it's usually in one ear and out the other. The only way to make it fun is to intrinsically motivate a kid to move forward. And so that's why Gravy Stack, the, the logical answer for us was, let's take two really hard things and put them together, banking and gaming, like as one. So now parents aren't forcing anything. Kids are like motivated. They're like fired up. They want to earn grits and get in there and beat the games and up level their avatar and do all these real world challenges. You know, we just had a girl last week. Um, it was the Gove family, Brent and his wife. I don't, you, I don't know if you know them in, in Puerto Rico. Their daughter saved $800 in subscriptions. Wow. On her own for the family. And so they texted, they're like, what is this game? Like, what are you doing? We're like, it's simple, make it fun and then connect it to the real world. That's how kids learn. And I think a lot of times parents are outsourcing. Like they're, they're, they're thinking that their kids are learning things with others at school, at church, at sports, at the camp. Like they're just outsourcing it. And if you really want your kids to learn the core values of life, it has to be done in the home. You have to take the responsibility yourself. And so that's what we're trying to solve for. We're not even going after the education system because I've worked in it forever. I know how hard it is to try to push curriculum down through the unions and the schools. And we're like, forget this. We're going to do a grassroots movement, starting with all of the private school, homeschool, co-op groups that like their our wait list is through the roof of those families. They're like, please, we've been waiting for this forever. Like, mm -hmm. let's go. And then it will take off. And once half the kids in the classroom are doing it, I think the schools will wake up and say, all right, we got to figure out a way to use Gravy Stack to help teach the kids, right? That's yeah, our- You got to make noise over here. They, you know, the old saying, no one ever got in shape by picketing a McDonald's. It's like, no, I'm going to go get in shape. And then people might ask, you know, hey, how did you get in shape? So That's now great. we love what you're doing. It's very aligned with, you know, a lot of our listeners who have been to our retreats. I mean, this is- one of our pillars saying, how do we make it better for our children? Not doing the push-ups for them. 
but where they, you know, have a life of, of professional and personal success. And I think yeah. this is such, such a needed skill that's missed or looked over or passed over. And you're sending them out, as you said, unprepared, untrained. Right. Um, and, and I'm excited about this. I know, especially for our six and eight year old, I'm like, wow, this will be something really fun to do with them. So I was yeah. like, I can see Maggie canceling our subscriptions being like, yeah. why are you paying $39 a month for this dad? And I'll be like, I don't even remember what that is. <laughs> yeah. And, and parents are busy, right? Like use yeah. kids as an asset in the home, not a liability. And by the way, so gravy stack, the name stack your gravy. It's just simple. It's, it has to sound fun. Like we don't want it to sound like work or a bank. We have cuss words like work, bank, chores, allowance. Like those are all cuss words. And <laughs> yeah. so gravystack.com slash 18 summers, one uh -huh. eight summers. We'll get that out to you guys. Um, and for all of your community to join in. The, the thing is like free to play the games. And then once you want to do all the banking stuff, it's like 23 cents a day. Awesome. Cool. That easy. And then the parent, there's like a parent elite program where we do all the workshops for parents and help them out and give them some resources. And our goal is this community helps parents. So let's right. go find a bunch of communities around the world and bring parents together to talk about these issues and give them good resources. Love to have you guys be a part of that elite program. You oh, should, sure. you've got to come talk to our families. You would, you would crush. They need yeah. to hear about the family board meetings. Like they got it. I want you in on this. And that one's like 17 bucks a month. So it's not much. We're keeping it simple because, oh, and then the last thing is scholarship. So we're mm -hmm. in the process right now of creating our foundation. So we don't want to turn any kid away, right? Mm -hmm. Like the mission is 50 million financially competent kids ready to succeed. And really what we mean is like 50 million families, right. because if the kids are this way, the parents are free, like they're learning along with them. And so um, we're going to, if you can't afford the 23 cents a day, we will literally just pay for it for you. So just like send us a message. We need a scholarship. We're like, here you go. Like, I'm not going to turn anybody away. Um, but yeah, so I, I we just hope it helps a lot of families. Like it's going to solve our problem. Like you guys, I think you built what you're doing because you got kids and you're trying to figure it out. There's, exactly. there's only a few people in the world that have that gene that like the light bulb goes on. They're like, oh yeah. We got to do this for our family and then we can help other people do it. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm doing. I got four kids, young kids. I want them to be raised with the value creation mindset to be successful in the real world. And this was our answer. So proud awesome. of what you guys are doing too. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, Thank you so much for yeah. bringing it into the world and we'll put in our show notes, but where's the best place to find all things Scott Donnell? Uh, I'm Scott Donnell on social. I just started doing it. I, I've never done social. Six million families. I never did it, but now with like we have a team putting stuff up and our content, so you can just find me there or um, we, find the we book a, stack and all that the stuff. Books on, on Amazon and anywhere else that you need to. Yeah, value value creation kid. You can grab it on Amazon or Audible. I did the Audible myself. Nineteen hours of hell. Now it's live. Yeah. Um, We've been done that. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's not nineteen hours. It's not nineteen hours. It's only like six. But, but it's, 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 to get it done, hours. yeah, it's it's a big yeah. overlap. I get it. <laughs> and then, and the the only other resource I can give is um, we started a show called Smart Money Parenting. Oh yeah, um, and it, it it's ripping right now. It's with my buddy Chad. He wrote Smart Not Spoiled, his book. Chad and, Willardson. Oh, Chad Willardson. We had yeah. him on the show yeah. a couple months ago. So that's that's Chad. He's one of the our core uh, founders of Gravy Stack and. So we're both just doing this kind of personality, 20 minute topical content for parents, how to raise smart money kids and called smart money parenting. So it's, it's, that's been really, really fun. Um, and yeah, we're just trying to give as many resources as possible to help families out because it's, it's busy, it's stressful and there's a lot going on. And I think a lot of times parents miss the core stuff, right? They'll, they're following the Joneses. They're doing all the, they're going through the motions and then they're like, oh, I totally missed that piece. I should have done that. So we're just trying to hit the core stuff, like keep the first things first, right? And then you'll be good. Big rocks. Awesome. Love Thank well, you so much, Scott, for being here. We learned a ton. Yeah. I, I, it's awesome. I, I'm excited. I two or three things I want to start to implement right away. But we'll definitely encourage the book, the app for personal use and for our community. Yeah, I'm excited to try it out. And we'll continue cheering from the sidelines. And I'm sure we'll be crossing paths again soon. Absolutely. Thank you guys for your time. Really appreciate it. So